Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the basics of working with Mocha Plus and Premiere Pro. I'm Imagineer Systems Product Manager Martin Brennan and I'm going to be taking you through a straightforward example of blurring out this number plate. We'll be using Mocha Plus 4 to track and mask the motion and Adobe Premiere Pro to perform the necessary blurring. Now all the techniques I show you today can be done in either Mocha Plus 4 or Mocha Pro 4 and it'll only export into versions of Premiere that can support masks and in this case that is Premiere Pro CC 2004. 14 and above. Okay, so here we are inside Mocha Plus 4 and I'm going to come up to the new project button and that loads our new project dialog and I'm just going to choose a clip to import. So we'll come in here and it's already selected in our open window so let's bring in the clip. Now inside the new project dialog we have all of the settings we need to set up our project and the biggest ones you've got to focus on here is your frame range the frame offset, which is here starting at zero. If we don't want it to start at zero, we can set it to be a fixed frame and set the frame offset here. This fixed frame offset is set by default in preferences, so you can set that to whatever you need, like 1001 or a certain time code. But in this case, I'm gonna read from the file and get the initial start frame, which in this case is zero. So the format stuff is very important to check to make sure it's the same as inside your compositor or editor. And this is all looking fine, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And we'll override that file because we have one already. OK, so here we have our shot, and if we just scrub through the timeline, we can see how this van is coming through the shot. And we've got this number plate on the back here that we want to blur out so the details are obscured. And we can see that a little bit better if we brighten it up. So the initial impression you may have is that we would want to just draw a simple shape around the number plate and then export that out to Premiere. But what we want to do is try and be as accurate as possible because we get quite a lack of information up here around the number plate where it completely goes off screen. And we also start to lose it completely over the other side. So what we'd want to do is get more information if possible. And this is great because Mocha is a planar tracker and we can grab the entire plane of the back of this van. So I'm going to draw a shape around the van and then I'm going to track the entire back and then apply that tracking data to some other masks. So I'll just jump up to full and we'll go into the shot here. And this is probably a good frame to start on because we've got a nice clean back to work with. So when you're tracking a shot like this, it's always good to check what you're dealing with throughout the entire shot. So I'm going to remember this frame. This is frame 53, which we'll draw our shape on. But I'm going to go through the shot now and see how the data is changing over time. So we can see this big light pass coming through over here around frame 100. But I don't think it's going to be a big problem because we've still got a lot of good texture detail around here. And Mocha is actually quite good at ignoring this kind of change when you're doing a track. So I'm not too worried about that. There are big reflections happening up here, so we're going to have to ignore this part of the van. And if we track all the way back through and scrub back to here, as we're coming off here, we're getting quite a different look to the back of the van over here. If I just come and line this up here. So we can see here we're starting to lose a lot of information, there's a lot of motion blur, and I think probably around here we're going to start losing the track a little bit, but we'll give it a go and see what we can get. If we start to sort of veer off slightly, we can always fix that up after we've done the track. Okay, so I'm going to come back to that frame 53, which looked like a nice place to draw, and I'm just going to start drawing that shape. So let's just zoom in a little bit. Now, as before, I said we've got a bit of reflection going on in this window. I could draw around the entire edge of the van and then cut a hole out, because we can do that with our spline drawing tools. In fact, let's just have a quick look at how that works. I'm going to draw that all the way around, and I'm going to just cut a hole out using the Add to Spline tool. So when we turn on the mats here, which are just up here, all mats. We can see that that secondary spline cuts a hole out of the initial spline. And this is really, really good for ignoring areas like this. But in this case, I really don't won't get that much extra information out of this top part. So I can actually probably get rid of all of this section 
and just deal with this bottom half here because we're getting a lot of good texture information just from the number plate area, the bumper here, the sign and the logo on the back, and even just this edge of the window where the windscreen wiper is, or rather the back window wiper. So I'm just going to use a four point drawn shape here and just track this whole area using perspective track with the planar tracker. So I'm going to turn on my perspective in the motion parameters down here because we want to get that motion going across the whole shot as he turns around the corner. And I'm going to set my minimum percentage of pixels used to about 90. And the reason I'm setting it to 90 is just to grab more pixels for tracking. The larger this value is, the slower the track is, but the more accurate it is. And vice versa, if you do a small amount in here, it'll be a very fast track, but you'll get less accuracy. So I'm going to keep my input channel as luminance because I don't really care to check in my individual channels. Auto channel checks the R, G, and B to see which is the best data to work with. But in this case, I'm pretty sure I've got enough luminance data to work with. So I'm also going to turn on my surface and grid. Now, the surface and grid is usually used to check your tracking data specifically so you can line up tracks a bit better. But I'm using the tracking uh, surface and grid here just to make sure that the track is looking okay. Because when you're tracking with large roto shapes, often it's actually hard to see whether that track is going well or not. Because you've got very large motion and very subtle things can happen without you seeing them. So I'm keeping this grid here so I can actually just keep an eye on how that track is moving through the shot. So if I start tracking backwards now, we can see that's actually rotating correctly in perspective up to a point. And as we get closer to here, I'm just going to start slowing down a little bit because we're getting very close to this sort of rough area up here where we're going to start losing a lot of texture information. And that's still holding on pretty well. But from here, I think what we need to do is actually add a little bit more. So to do that, what I'm going to do is come up to the Add Point to Spline tool. You could use the Add Xpline to Layer tool, like I showed you before, to draw that additional shape. But this one just lets you add additional points to the existing shape. So I'm going to draw two points here and just drag them up here. And we'll add another one. Let's just cover this whole area. That reflection now has gone. So I can cover a lot more of this area to make sure that I'm capturing as much information as possible. So I'm going to come down here and make sure I've got everything, and that's looking okay. So this is just really, really handy when you're working with planar tracking. You can stop the track at any time and keep on manipulating your shapes because it's still dealing with that entire plane. As long as you're adding and taking, cutting out holes in the plane that you're working on, you can do it anywhere in that plane. So this makes it very, very powerful. So I'm just going to keep tracking back one frame at a time to make sure it's still looking okay. And we're doing not too bad because we've got that extra information. That's still looking okay, and then we suddenly lose it because we lose the back of the van completely. So we'll just undo that last track, and I'm just going to set a keyframe on all these splines. And then on the next frame, I'm just going to move my splines completely off the edge of our viewer. So I'm just going to turn off those spline and grid for a second, and we'll just have a look at how that looks. So you can see there, even though the spline is now animating, because I've done two changes between where I drew the shape and added more points up here, we can see actually that it's following along quite nicely. Now if I turn that surface and grid back on, you can see how that follows along correctly with the track. And if I just move this back to where it was before, If we now scrub through the timeline, we can see that that's still locking on quite well. So this is going to really, really link well up to our rotor shape when we do it later. So I don't really need to see the rest of my spline here, so I'm just going to set my layer properties to that being the out point. So when I scrub to the start, we won't see that spline anymore. So now we come back all the way to where we started the spline and start tracking forwards. So as we track forwards, we can see how well that grid is locking on and turning around the corner with the van because it's capturing all that nice planar information. And as it gets to the corner, it will stop because we don't quite get around this corner here. 
So now we can play it back and check to make sure it's looking okay, and we're pretty happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is attach this tracking shape to a new mat. So let's just turn off our grid and our surface, and I'm going to actually turn off the mat for my layer, and I'm going to call this one van underscore track. And let's just turn off its tracking cog so that we don't track anymore. And I'm actually going to turn it off completely in visibility so that we don't have to look at it anymore. So once we've actually done all of our tracking data, now all we need to do is the actual mask. So I'm going to come in down here to my number plate and I'm going to draw a shape, just a simple four point shape around the number plate. Let's just line that up a little bit. And once we have our shape in place, all we need to do is link it back to the original track. So I'm going to come down here to where Link to Track is, select that and choose the van track that we did for the other layer. And now what it will do is follow along correctly with the shot. And we can see here that that's following right off screen, even though that we can't see it anymore. It's because we're following that plane that we tracked across the entire back of the van. And the same goes for all the way up the other end. So now that we have our shape, we can go ahead and export it out to Premiere. So this part is quite simple. We just come down to our export shape data and we choose Adobe Premiere shape data. So I'm just going to copy that to the clipboard and we can move over to Premiere. Okay, so here we are inside Premiere Pro CC 2014 and I've already got my piece of footage sitting in a sequence. Now to apply the data inside this view, what we're going to need to do is actually add a copy of the original plate. So I'm just going to drag a new one straight into the timeline. So now we have two in V1 and V2. And we're going to apply our mask data to the top one because we only want to apply the blur to a small section of our plate. And we don't want to mask out everything in the shot either. So we've got our second one selected. To actually apply the mask data, what we do is come up to our opacity in the effect controls, right click it and choose paste. Now when we do this, you won't actually see anything happen. And this is because we have both of our layers shown. If I turn off V1, you'll now see the mask on V2 pasted into the viewer. So if I just turn that back on, if we go to our opacity inside the effect controls, we can see the mask layer two is sitting there in the shot. So once we've got our mask in the shot, all we need to do is now apply the blur. And this is very simple. We just come over to our effects and we can choose one of the various blur options. In this case, I'm going to try a fast blur. And we just need to start dragging this up to blur it out. So we just blur it out a little bit like so. So now when we scrub through the timeline, that blur is being applied on the fly with the masked out area only. If we were to actually disable our mask, you would see obviously it blur out the entire shot. But because we have that mask applied from Mocha Plus, it's blurring it out correctly. So let's just come back to Mocha Plus for a second and just quickly talk about this tracking process. The great thing about doing a single track over a larger area means that you can apply that tracking data more than once to different masks. So for example, if we wanted to get rid of the logo up here and do the same kind of blur, all we would need to do is draw an additional shape around that particular logo, just like so. Let's just call this one logo blur. And then all we would need to do is attach it back to that original track again. And it's going to start following along just like the number plate. So when we have that in place, all we need to do is again is go to export shape data, choose Adobe Premiere shape data again, and export the selected layer. If we're doing a simple blur across both of these shapes and we want to keep the blur consistent, we could also choose all visible layers and export them both at once. So I'm just going to choose the selected layer because we've already exported out our number plate, copy to that to the clipboard and move back over to Premiere. Back over in Premiere, I could either choose to paste the additional mask to my uh, original layer or do it as a separate layer. So let's try the separate layer. I'm going to come back to my number plate add a new one into V3, and then selecting that layer, 
just paste that mask again and we're going to apply that blur as well so effect fast blur and we can see now that mask sitting in the view and once again we can ramp up that blur to make it disappear just like so so once we've actually got this done we can choose to do a few more things inside the premiere mask data for example if we wanted to feather this out further we just scroll down into our opacity we can adjust the mask feather to actually make it a little bit more uh, feathered out on the edges around the mask or we could expand the mask to actually blur out a much larger area and actually have it follow that that's a little bit excessive but we'll just undo that or of course we can also choose to invert the mask and only have that logo showing in the shot so there's a few flexible things you can do with that premiere mask data once you've got it in pasted from mocha so this can become quite a powerful workflow. You can track one individual plane and then link many, many different rotor shapes to that same plane. This means that you can do half the amount of work because you're only having to deal with one set of data across many different layers. We can then easily just copy that out to the clipboard to Premiere and then paste it right into those effect controls. So that wraps it up for this tutorial on the basics of Mocha Plus and Premiere Shape Data. If you have any questions about this tutorial or just want to know how to do more with Mocha Pro and Mocha Plus, please head to our forums at imagineersystems.com.